the secret rebel life of party royal princess Margaret. From a young girl, the Countess of Snowdon, Princess Margaret was always a bit different from her sister, Queen Elizabeth. Princess Margaret was determined, independent, fun-loving and had a slight bit of rebelliousness in her. She became one of the most famous princesses in history. From her party girl lifestyle that used to make headlines to the shock of her relationship with Peter Townsend, Margaret's youth was full of scandals, romance and excitement. So, let's look at what life was like for Princess Margaret. From when she was a young girl, Princess Margaret repelled as well as compelled her fellow party guests. In the year 1943, a publisher named Mark Bonham Carter, dancing with the teen princess at a ball at Windsor Castle, to find her as full of character and very tart in her criticisms. During her teen years and early 20s as well, the high-spirited rebel princess was revered as a modern, mischievous royal unwilling to play the game. A journalist also said, a bored mecontent, ready to burst out against it all, a Duke of Windsor among the women of the royal family. The clever Princess Margaret discovered perhaps her best party trick quite early on. Princess Margaret used the royal protocol and its rules to suit her whims and desires. For example, at a party given in her honour in Paris in 1959, she took advantage of the long-standing rule that dinner could not begin until she arrived. Margaret's behaviour exacerbated the stuffier set and the glittering hard partying, as well as the entertainment circles she, along with her husband Anthony Armstrong Jones, gravitated towards. The princess insisted on being called Mom and would lure people in with her charm, only to play the grand dame the moment they got too close. The beautiful, famous, as well as the truly talented were frequently the target of Margaret's wrath. The princess had a perverse love of telling artists she disliked them and their work. She greeted producer Robert Evans at a gala in London and told him that her husband had hated his hit movie, Love Story. Moreover, the princess also hated opera, Sondheim and Boy George, making her dislike abundantly known. When the troublemaking princess met with a former Hollywood actress, Princess of Monaco, Grace Kelly, she sniped, well, you don't look like a movie star. During the 60s, she ignored supermodel Twiggy at a dinner party and finally asking her name, Leslie, ma'am, but my friends call me Twiggy. The princess responded with, how unfortunate, before turning away. The arrogant Princess Margaret occasionally met her match. Once during an official visit to Hollywood in the 1960s, the princess went too far when she ordered Judy Garland to sing. Princess Margaret also met her match with the iconic Elizabeth Taylor, who seemed to have been pretty amused by Margaret's continued slights. It was written that, after Richard Burton presented Taylor with a huge crop diamond, Margaret remarked to a friend that it was the most vulgar thing I've ever seen. Taylor heard of this slight, and a while later the two women met at a party. Elizabeth Taylor was wearing the diamond and asked Margaret if she wanted to try it. Margaret slipped it on her finger. Does not look so vulgar now, does it? observed Taylor. Moreover, at the end of one particularly tense party in London in the early 1980s, which included an embarrassing episode where the princess recited the lines from Taylor's current play, she finally looked at the good-natured movie star dismissively. She replied with, Is anyone going to take her home or will we have to find a sleeping bag? Critic Brian Sewell described a stay with the princess at a friend's house in the country where she took advantage of the protocol so that no one could retire before Her Royal Highness. The princess used to arrive an hour before midnight for a ruined dinner schedule for eight, and by then the servants from the village had gone home to bed and the rest of us, some half dozen, absolutely plastered, had to buckle to and carry and carve the baked meats of sacrifice and then she kept us up until 4 a.m. kippering us with her cigarettes. And long after the crack of dawn, with not a sniff of coffee nor sign of a servant in the kitchen to clear the mess from the night, I wandered into the village, called a friend and arranged a late morning death and doomsday telephone message requiring my immediate return home. Princess Margaret constantly kept her exhausted hosts on edge. She was legendarily picky, and she only drank bottled Melbourne water and openly disparaged her hosts' carefully prepared dishes. It was noted that she seemed to delight in making her superiority evident at all times. Journalist Selena Hastings recalled, We were going to drive from Royal Lodge to Castle. 
Hastings also said she was wearing some peaked toe sandals and as she got into the car, the princess said, Selena, I've got some chewing gum on my shoe. So I had to get out and go around to the other side and pull the chewing gum off. And nowhere was the princess more catered to than the private island of Mystique, owned by her great friend Colin Tennant. From the 1970s until the princess's death, Mystique was her private party fiefdom. The tenant even supplied bowls of fresh water to wash the sand off her feet after her daily swim. Actor Nicholas Courtney told the journalist, he collapsed with exhaustion when Princess Margaret left the island. He put every ounce of energy into making it fun for her. Even her understanding and loving sister found Princess Margaret an exacting and maddening guest. Moreover, after scalding her feet in Mystique in 1999, the princess often used a wheelchair, though her sister thought it unnecessary. Also, during a visit to Buckingham Palace, Elizabeth had only supplied a wheelchair for the nonagenarian Queen Mother, much to Princess Margaret's dismay. In her last years, Princess Margaret was considered so unpleasant that the officials at Sotheby's used to bribe fellow guests to chat with her for only five minutes. Just like her late father, King George VI, Princess Margaret was a heavy smoker, a habit that eventually began to take significant toll on her. Margaret did eventually give up smoking, but she continued to suffer from numerous ailments. Having suffered a series of strokes as well as a cardiac problem, she passed away in a hospital on the 9th of February 2002 at the age of 71. Queen Mother died just a few weeks later on the 30th of March at the age of 101. Unlike most royals, Princess Margaret was cremated and her ashes were interred in the King George VI Memorial Chapel at Windsor. Well guys, that's all we have for you for today. Did you know the secret rebel life of Princess Margaret? Get involved and let us know in the comment section down below what you think about today's video. If you liked this video and found it informative, then be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, if you don't want to miss out on any new future videos like these, then be sure to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification under this video so that you're notified the next time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.